Well, it's always an exciting time when we have some babies coming into the fray here. So she just had her babies. Uh, oh, there's a baby right up front. I'll have to stick it back there with the rest of them. But they're getting all wiggly. It's amazing. These are really pretty rabbits. This is my brown rabbit that I made it with the black, and that's why we're getting different colors here. I like doing that. Doesn't do much good mating it with the white rabbit. Get some grays and browns and tans and everything this way. It's very sweet. Let me show you a few of the others. One of the things that I notice, and it's really kind of interesting, is uh, that little runt over there. That used to be as black as, jet black as can be, but now that it's growing up, it's actually turning into more like a darker gray. And so that's, a, that's always kind of interesting. But here she's had the majority of white bunnies. And you can see a couple speckled ones, speckled. And then we've got the darker one. So there's like, because she's multicolored, she picks up a few different colors. But it's, uh, so you can see I mated her with my white champion over there. But we, we do get a mix of uh, different ones. So next door actually separated the mama out of here because these are big enough to be uh, self-sufficient now and uh, they're doing really well these are just growing like crazy very happy with these i can't remember if i showed this or not but i finally ran power out here so i've got a fan for the rabbits and i hooked it up to a attic thermostat and so i set it for you know like about 80 degrees when it gets 80 degrees the uh, fan comes on this mama's got to be separated here pretty soon, too, because these are getting pretty doggone big. And these are due to be processed today. These are my last batch i got to process for like a month or so. So i got to get them into the freezer. So they're, uh, they're having their last meal, their favorite meal, too. Look how big they are. These are nice sized rabbits. Now my beat up chicken, I put it in here with my younger chickens. And unfortunately there's a rooster in there. And she's she's uh, having to reestablish herself on the pecking order. But the uh, it's kind of a sad thing. She, she can't be out with the regular ones right now because she gets picked on. So I don't know if she's just going to become dinner or what but uh, that's another reason why you really have to just keep a rotation going because you're going to lose one or two and so luckily i've got another rhode island red hen here and then these uh, fancy feet ones i really need to look up what they are i can't remember the name of them but uh anyways they're doing good i, I don't hear the rooster crowing this morning i guess it's a little late i'm out here cutie i see you all the chickens down here I'll tell you what I got to do something with this backyard because that is a bear to mow I got to get in here and have this thing scraped and terraced a little bit to make it easier because this is a royal pain in the butt I had a whole bunch of trees back here and so we cut the trees down and then had the stumps ground but we've left it just very uneven and uh, you can't really have grass or anything with chickens they just kind of destroy everything so I don't know what to do about this but if I at least get it terraced then I'll have you know nice flat areas that I can mow and then just go down to the next terrace and mow that and then go to the next terrace that's that's probably what I'll end up having done so my uh, lucky dog he's now escaped twice and he disappears for like two hours and then when he comes back, and both times it's been in the middle of the day, both times when he comes back, you think he's having heat stroke, and he just crashes. And uh, last time he must have gone all the way down to the edge of the lake and got all muddy, and so I ended up having to wash him like three times to get all the mud off of him. But he must have had a blast. So we have to keep him on a leash because he just really can't be trusted. But he comes back every time, so that's the good thing. We really thought we'd lost him two times, but he knows where his home is, and he just comes right back. But Dougie, Dougie has been the best dog in the world. I, don't, I never have to put him on a leash. 
He just wants to stay right next to us. And I don't know why the stupid dogs are eating grass. It drives me crazy when they do that. But their stomach must be unsettled for some reason. So I've been slowly working on this hill. And uh, so I have it uh, terraced. I've just been using the rototiller and then I come out here when I'm, it's not terribly hot and I've been filling up these channels with the uh, uh, rabbit manure and then I've been planting plants. So I've got a bunch of watermelons planted and they're starting to really take off now so I can't wait to see how they work but I'm probably, I need to get the rest of this filled in and uh, keep planting all the way down. It's probably... I have to figure out what else I can plant this time of year, but I, at some point I'm going to have to start planting some fall type things, maybe some squash and stuff or, you know, pumpkins, things like that. That'd be kind of cool. But uh, anyways, we're slowly getting at it. I got some rain coming in the next couple days, so I got to knock a bunch of stuff out. So the other day I had to pull out all my tomato plants. I had gotten some kind of blight or fungus or something. I just have not sprayed anything, trying to keep as organic as possible. So I ended up, uh, you know, this bed is empty except for some peppers. They're doing well. That bed is still having some troubles with a few of the newer plants I planted, but uh, that whole bed was an onion bed, and I put uh, three bags of cow manure, rototilled it all in, and planted with new uh, tomato plants We'll have to see how it works out my pepper plants Again, I still have a wilt on some of these kind of like what I was getting on the tomato plants But the rest of them all of a sudden like this one exploded three times the size in just a couple weeks I wanted to tell you that I started pulling up my potatoes and uh, one row I ended up with about a gallon of potatoes. I have two more rows I gotta dig up. I need to get out here early in the morning and take care of that. And then I got this other whole potato bed over here. I gotta do the same thing. But we have been, I'll stitch together a video of my green beans, but you know, that's pole beans back there. And then I have two beds of uh, bush beans. And the other day we canned four gallons four gallon containers of uh, green beans and I forget how many I think it was nine quarts of green beans unbelievable and the cucumbers have just been phenomenal this year the magic is just keeping it off the ground keep it up on the trellis amazing had very little problems with uh, that uh, I forget what that stuff's called there's a white spot that you can get on the plants you can see there's a little bit on the bottom but not bad so anyways, carrots I think are probably ready to come up. I got to start pulling them up. Here's some more of the uh, bush beans. I can see some on here I got to pick already. There's a big one right there. I see a couple hanging off on that one there. You got to come out here every couple days because if you let them get too big, they kind of get tough. But... The way I pressure can them, they come out just like the stuff from the store. And these are my pepper plants that are up against the house, and they're just not doing quite as well because they only get the afternoon sun. They don't get the morning sun. I think the morning sun makes a huge difference. And uh, we're long overdue for rain. I haven't been watering my uh, bushes, and I can see some of my flowering plants are yellowing here. So I may water this morning. One thing you'll notice is if you do water before it rains, instead of it running off, it soaks in. Makes a big difference. Here's the other side uh, looking down the hill. This is a really steep hill. But this is going to work out great for planting. These are all sweet potatoes at the top. And then I think I have some cantaloupes and then watermelons after that. So I need to get the rest of this stuff uh, those furrows filled in with the uh, rabbit manure and go ahead and get the rest of the stuff planted. Kind of curious how this is going to work out. The sweet potatoes are really taking off now and I just put soaker hoses and I've got a, uh, a transfer pump hooked onto my big tank here and I 
I plan on just hooking a whole bunch of soaker hoses together and having them running in and out of these uh, channels and that should work out perfectly. All right, well that's 10 minutes. I gotta go inside and get some breakfast. I earned my breakfast this morning. I went ahead and fed all the animals and uh, so I gotta get, uh, get in there, eat something and then I gotta process rabbits and then maybe I'll go see what's going on in the news in the world. I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.